Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the Center for Intercultural Organizing. Uh, my name is Casey Chama. I am the executive director of the center. Um, center for Intercultural Organizing, uh, we founded this organization about uh, right after 9-11. And, and our mission is uh, uh, to build a multiracial, multi-ethnic movement for immigrant and refugee rights. Um, having said that, we also use uh, racial justice lens uh, to do uh, our work uh, in order to ensure that um, we are creating inclusive democracy. Um, so that's kind of the mission uh, of the center. Um, our work is deeply ingrained uh, human rights values and uh, we try to practice uh, what we uh, bridge uh, to the community. So this part of the workshop tonight we are doing is very much is what we call popular education and we'll give time to introduce um, uh, each, to each other, but generally just to frame it and to a little bit talk about the style of the workshop that we are working to, uh, doing tonight. Um, we use popular education methodology and I'm wondering if anyone knows or heard before what that means, a popular education model. So uh, popular education uh, generally is uh, originated from um, Brazil. Uh, Paulo Freire was the uh, gentleman who uh, uh, I would say coined the word um, and he, you know, the idea is that everybody is educated whether you get an informal edu formal education through the systems or whether you have your life experience um, every one of us has a knowledge and information to contribute so we're all uh, um, students and we're all teachers that's really what it means and many part of the world um, this is the type of uh, education that they use to educate people uh, in order to create uh, some sort of a um, knowledge around issues. Um, so that's kind of the model, popular education model we're going to be using. And um, we'll do a quick introduction. Um, I'm kind of anti-popular education because I'm sitting at a table. Um, but because we're filming, that's one of the reasons. But generally, it's a set up a circle like this. Uh, and um, that's what, where we uh, usually, how we do it. So before we start the workshop, I just want to quickly go around. And if you can just say your name, um, and uh, why did you sign up this workshop? What, and if just take maybe 30 seconds or so, um, just let us know. So we're going to start here. Welcome, thank you, and my name is Casey Chama. I am the Executive Director of the Center for Intercultural Organizing. Um, brief uh, of myself, if I just say a little bit, few words of myself. Um, I'm originally from Somalia. I came to this country as a, a refugee, um, but I didn't come directly uh, from Somalia to the United States. So it took me 16 countries around the world uh, to arrive in the United States. And every single country that I went to, I have migration and immigration history to tell. Um, so um, my passion for immigrant refugee, uh, refugee rights are based on my own personal experience. Um, but also uh, my education um, as a graduate of sociology at the Merrill University. Um, but also I am very interested in issues of uh, intersectionality between race and migration. And those are the issues that are really dear to me and, and the work that I do every day, that's how I'm, I look into the world, finding out uh, a common ground where we can make uh, this world a better place for all. Um, so welcome everybody. And let me quickly go through the um, agenda today, how we're gonna spend tonight. Um, the first portion of the workshop, we're gonna be sharing a little bit our own personal, additional personal migration history. Um, um, and so you will be asked to a little bit go back to your family trees and family history. Um, after we do that, um, you could see there's some posters at the wall, around the wall. So we will be asking you to go around and um, look into those posters and see what interests you and what you find out and you, what's new information that you learn. And uh, we'll come back then and have a larger group um, discussion. Um, and then at the end of the workshop, we will be um, tying together and kind of 
talking about a little bit about what's the current issues that immigrant and refugees are struggling um, um, within Oregon or within the United States. Um, so that's very much that's the discussion that we're going to be bringing home. Let's today, what's going on today in our community. So that's kind of the two levels of, of, of uh, um, portions of the workshop that we're going to be uh, uh, doing together. Um, just before we start, I want to say that, you know, as I said earlier, migration is trans transnational issues. Um, so um, we cannot solve migra United States migration issues without looking into the what's happening around the world. So that's kind of a premises that the centralist work operates around. Um, so I don't think so we're gonna learn everything about immigration, and about immigrant and refugees and immigrant refugee rights, but I'm hoping this workshop will help you to be a, a teaser in, in a way if I say, my say, and that will help you to further explore this topic. Um, and the most important piece that if, if I want you to take one thing away from this workshop today is that the discussions and the dialogue I hope that you will have with your fr family, with your friends, with your colleagues, uh, because as I've been doing this work for many years, a lot of people say, you know, when they are at work or when they are with their kitchen table is having a dinner with their families, when the issues of immigration comes around, uh, it's a tough conversation when somebody says something and you don't have the tools to uh, uh, either uh, have a you know, discussion or dialogue rather than argument. Um, so I'm hoping that, that my goal is to give you some, maybe some small tools tonight, but my hope that then you will go and further investigate yourself and bring and add more tools to your toolbox if I say. Um, so that's kind of where we are, but also knowing that, as I said, this issue is a very complex one, so we're not going to be unpacking everything tonight. So I just want to, you know, make sure that we all know that. And then the last thing before we start, I will say is that, know that this is issue is a very hot topic, so even if we are having discussion among ourselves, we might disagree, and that's okay. Uh, that's really the purpose of the workshop, is to create a dialogue. Uh, among, uh, c among communities. So it's okay to disagree, but most important thing is that everybody's, everyone's point of view is valid. And we want to make sure that we validate everybody's point of view and in making sure that we create the space where dialogue can take place. Um, um, so if, you know, if one ground rule that we can create tonight before we move forward is what I call usually uh, agree to disagree. If you're not able to come to an agreement or uh, an issue or, or points that you're talking about, it's okay to agree to disagree, and that's kind of what I want to leave you with. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and start. So what I would like you to do uh, now, um, I want you, I will pass you some piece of papers, and you can, um, I'll also pass a bucket of uh, pencils and pens, um, just take one, if you have one yourself already, you can keep it. Um, and if you don't have one, you can get, get one. And then what I would like you to do is, so let me quickly, while you're doing that, let me ask, talk about a little bit about what we're going to be doing. So the workshop goals, again, is to share a personal and family history of immigration, place our personal immigration his, history into the context of the U.S. immigration, labor, and racial justice history, examine how immigration policy has shaped U.S. by including or excluding people based or on their race, class, gender, sexual orientation, national origins, and disability. We will also discuss social and historical and economic factors that causes migration, including forced migration, displacement, and and, and, and immigration over, through, overall. So that's kind of the, the goals of the workshop that I, we're going to be doing together. What I would like you to do that now that everyone has a piece of paper, what I would like you to think about, answer these three questions that you see on the screen. So I know that most of you here tonight might be probably you're not the first generation uh, immigrant, probably uh, either your family, your parents, or your Great, 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 great bands came here somewhere. So what I would like you to think about, go back, what do you hear from your family, uh, you know, your uh, history, what do you know about your family history, and answer these three questions. When did you or your family come to, to the United States? Where, 
you or your family came from? Why did your, you or your family uh, came to the United States or moved to the United States? Uh, how did I get here? Let's, let's come back together. So what I would like you to do now is find a partner, someone you're already talking to. So bear, bear with someone. And then start that corner right here. There's a, it's almost a timeline. So it starts from that corner, go around all the way here and look around the timeline. Spend a little bit, you know, time to just to read what's going on um, in, in the years around the, you know, timeline. When, if you've written your family history, I give you a piece of tape. What I would like you to do is when you go around, if you say your family or your great great family came here 1870, when you find the closest timeline that when your family came, attach that piece of paper underneath of the timeline on the wall. On the wall. And then be really, pay attention to what was going on at the time that your family came what was going on in the United States immigration. And then we'll come around and then take about maybe uh, 15 minutes and see how far you guys can go. And then we can come back together. But make sure that you bear with someone and you can talk about the timeline as you go through it.
what I would like you to do now, get into the groups of, I would say, three. And then what I would like you to do is that um, answer, discuss, discuss the last three questions on the bottom. And then hopefully take about 10, uh, 10, 15 minutes to write down your answers as you discuss. And hopefully someone will take a note so you can report back what you have discussed um, to the larger group. And that's kind of the work CIO we, we're trying to do in terms of bringing both allies and American refugees into this movement, creating spaces where all of us can take a leadership role in terms of supporting uh, social justice movement and immigrant rights, but also knowing where our role is. Sometimes we, we, we take a leadership and then times we need to step back and let others let us. So that's kind of a step forward, step back kind of style. That's what CIO we're trying to inc incorporate our work as part of the organization was a multi-ethnic, uh, multi-racial organization. So I think we just need to expand that kind of a movement. So um, we're gonna just quickly conclude. So what I'm, I'm hoping that, I hope you get out of this exercise or this workshop tonight is that one is that um, immigration history in the United States is a very complex one. And it has a very systematic way from the beginning, um, either including or excluding certain segment of our community based on what's happening in the country at the time, both politically and economically. Uh, and that's been reflected um, throughout the timeline. And if you um, look quickly, for example, you know, we talked about a little bit about um, in um, 1920 to 1930 um, because of the recession and depression, we deported millions of uh, um, uh, Mexican immigrants. And um, then in 1942 uh, to 64, when the economy get better and we, there is economic boom, we created a Bracero program, which is a guest workers program. We invited back uh, immigrants from Mexico to come to this country uh, to work. So the point is that the historically, in, the, in terms of the, when the economy is better, we always, we kind of open the doors, we welcome immigrants, and when the economy gets tougher, we tend to um, um, uh, deport. The other aspect of the immigration history timeline that we cover is about the, the political connections of the immigration and the race connections of Im immigration, right? So um, depending what's going on in our uh, uh, global politics, um, there's times that we uh, exclude certain groups and potentially even sometimes like including what happened to the Chinese Americans, we, we detained them, although they were, a lot of them were US citizens, or the Chinese Exclusion Act. Um, those policies all reflect part of the complexity of the United States history. We also talked about a little bit about the bus certificate side because I think there's also human movements and struggle that's taking place throughout that history of immigration, right? So people struggle against those policies and people organize around um, co collectively to work together to change those policies. So there is also, if you look at it, you will see wins and, and what you can call changes that took place throughout the history of this country. Uh, and good example is the, the 1964 Civil Rights Act and, and among other spaces that you have seen in the timeline that where we were able to move the needle in the right direction. Right? So that's a part of also the importance of, that's why it's so important that we all come together tonight because we, we, you ha we have to be part of that struggle, this currently what's happening. If you know in this country right now, millions of millions of undocumented immigrants are very much becoming uh, criminalized by, uh, um, by states and the federal government. And the only way we can change and we can change the needle in the right direction is if we all got involved, we have all in the stake. So immig immigrant, immigration is not something that only impacts immigrant refugees. Immigration impacts all of us. And we have to 
participate and create, be part of the history that creates the change is necessary to, to be created. So that's kind of also what we are hoping to take away points of this workshop tonight. And then the lastly and the last thing that I want to say is that I'm hoping that each and every one of you will continue the dialogue with your friends, with your family, as I said earlier, and hopefully will be, this will be a tool and beginning of discussion and deeper dialogue about race, about migration, and about um, creating a just community, just society. That's really the essence of this workshop. And I hope that the last thing that I want to say is also taking action, right? Information and education without an action is not a, you know, it's, it's not, to me, it's not a education. So taking an action and taking stand up against um, uh, immigrant detention or immigrant issues uh, that issues that impact immigrants and being the allies with them, that's an important role that we can each and every one of us play. So I will encourage you all of you also taking part in organizations like CIO, CALSA, APANO, all other organizations who are doing immigrant refugee rights and overall organizations who are doing social justice. Um, so that's very much it.